Hello folks, this is Johnny again and today I want to discuss with you why I'm ditching the Marshall DSL-20 and instead I'm going with the Orange Dock Terror. First of all, let me say that the Marshall DSL-20 is a really, really good amplifier. It has a very nice and juicy and saturated sound. I really like that and it has all the features that you could really want in an amplifier, but the one problem it has or the one little shortcoming that's unfortunately really really important to me is low end tightness because the lower you tune your guitars the more important it becomes how exactly the amp reacts to all of that low end and this one is just a little too loose and because of that there's not enough note definition and not enough pressure and force behind that low end that I'm really after and that I really need for the music that I'm making. And I also notice that when I'm playing through the amp, I may be digging into the string, but the amp just doesn't react in kind. And I just had to use this amp for, for a couple of weeks now to really get to, to understand how it really reacts, how it really behaves. And now I'm noticing while it is an amazing amp, that one thing that's actually most important to me it cannot really do. This is where the Orange Dog Terror comes in. Actually, I, I wanted to get me this amp in the first place, but it was just never in stock. And now I did find it in stock in the shop and I immediately pulled the trigger. And the tone this one provides is pretty much exactly what I was looking for for about two to three years. It has a very tight low end, maybe not the tightest of low end, but it is definitely better than the Marshall in that regard. And it has a very roaring and barking mid-range that I really like. Uh, here's a quick tone comparison. Now, of course, just listening to the tones, it doesn't give you the whole picture. You also have to play through these amps to really understand the differences and the nuances in a bit more detail. Uh, I also EQ'd these uh, tone demos to make the two amps sound pretty similar. So you can focus more on the distortion character. And you do hear the, the orange just sounds tighter in that low end. There's just no, no question about that. Without the EQ, these two do sound kind of different in the frequency balance. Now, one thing though I have to point out also about these two amps is their value, so the price to performance ratio. I think the Marshall is definitely better in that regard. It's about 400 bucks and it gives you all the features that you want, two channels and, you know, foot switching and whatnot and actual big tubes, the EL34s in the mastering stage. The orange, I think, is not that great of value. It sounds exactly what I want. That's why I'm keeping it. But, but <laughs> the value isn't that great, I have to say. I mean, it's single channel for one, which is already weird. So you have just one gain knob. Where is it? Over here. For the whole spectrum of clean to ultra high gain. Uh, which means you don't have that much fine control over how much gain exactly you want. Also, the knob feels kind of loose. If you know me, I like very tight feeling knobs, so you have a lot of control of how you set it. And because of that, you, there's of course no foot switch for it, and you can't just switch between clean and dirty channel. So I imagine if you wanted to do live gigs, this wouldn't really work for you, because you can only stick to one one kind of sound. That already I don't understand why they did it this way. Um, this amp costs almost 600 bucks, about 590 right now, but let's be real, okay? That's in the 600 bucks range, not in the 500 bucks range, because it's much closer to 600. So I'm going to call this a 600 bucks range 
amplifier, whereas this one is 400. And being just single channel for, for that price point, ugh, it's kind of iffy if you ask me. Also, the power tubes are the smaller EL84s. Um, they do their job, they are fine. Don't sound quite as good as the EL34s, the bigger ones. And also, of course, the tone knob here in the middle it feels just as loose as uh, these other knobs. They really should be tighter, if you ask me. Um, it, it's kind of weird. In all the videos I watched about this amp, the tone knob actually was very nicely balanced. When it's in the center, you have the very nicely balanced tone. Then you can go scooped, which was still useful. And you could go very mid-range heavy, which was still very useful. But in my experience with this amp, there is more of a general mid-range scoop and a low-end hump to it. And just this one tone controller just doesn't give you enough control over all of that. So a three-band EQ would have been nice. I know there, there was the dual dark for some time, which had two channels and three-band EQ, if I'm not mistaken, but that doesn't seem to be in production anymore. I, I can't find that anywhere. And I imagine it would have been quite a bit more expensive. But because of that, I also need to use this Fender Engager Boost, which is, well, usually a boost pedal, but it's very clean. It doesn't distort or overdrive in its, on its own and has a three-band EQ. So I just use that in the FX loop, so I have my three-band EQ, and this gives me way more control over things. And even for the for the mid-range, I can switch between upper mid-range and lower mid-range. So something like this will definitely enhance the experience. Also, generally speaking, um, if you have followed me in this last couple of months, um, or perhaps also for a couple of years, you know I've been using amp simulation for the longest time. And now that I switched to tube amps, I also made a lot of research about how to handle them and what you can do with them, what you can't do with them. And I just wonder why do they not make the process of switching the power tubes and setting the bias a bit more user-friendly? I mean, we have the technology. Take the Bulgaria Infinium line for example they have a self-biasing system if they can do it why can't they do it you know if that self-biasing system works well or sounds great or is also conducive for a long life of the amplifier i don't know but just the idea that it's self-biasing to me seems like a no-brainer i mean if we have the technology then why not do that or also, what I noticed on the PRS MT15, on the back, it has actual input jacks to, and also the little screw to measure the current going through the power tubes and setting the bias without having to take the amp apart and doing it on the circuit board, which could be dangerous. So why are things like that not standard? Why is there no progress in that regard? Things are getting smaller and more affordable. That's great. But the technology itself it doesn't seem to be a lot of progress. So that's it for this video. Just a quick update for you what I'm going through right now with my whole tone searching adventure. And I hope this also helped you to perhaps consider some things you may have not considered yet in your search for uh, a small form factor tube amp. I hope you enjoyed this. You know how YouTube works. Uh, comment, like, subscribe, all that shebang. And I shall see you next time.